Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's September 21st. These are your headlines. Best case scenario last week with Hurricane Lee, just a close brush off the Cape. We'll tell you where the Albies are. We'll tell you where the Stripers are. We'll tell you where everything is. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items to throw your way. The first one comes to us from Ralph Kraft over at Crafty One Customs, and it's regarding the Rhode Island Todd Classic. He just wanted to warn everybody that they're going to close the signups early this year because last year it became a logistical nightmare um, as the tournament drew closer and everybody was kind of last minute Larry in the thing. So they're going to close it up in seven days or so. So figure by this time next week, uh, it'll be too late. So if you're planning on signing up, I would definitely do it now. And, um, you know, I'll be there. I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys there. So head over to their website. That's craftyonecustoms.com, and you can sign up there. Next thing is a quick look at what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge. No new entries this week, but a reminder that SCUP is the fish of the month, and there is still time to be on top and win that tsunami rod and reel and a fillet knife from Dexter Outdoors. So here are the top three. Bobby Cifarelli still holds first place with 24 points. Eddie Terrabile remains in second place with 18 points. And Kyle Krause maintains his third place position with 16 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And the last thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. I uh, got a couple nice photos this week, so things are looking good there. Um, we're going to give away a Yozuri prize pack. It's going to have a whole bunch of Yozuri stuff in there. And if you don't know how this thing works, it's pretty basic. You send your photos in to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. And on October 26th, I will pick my favorite photo, and that person will win the Yozuri prize pack. So get those photos in to me, and uh, we'll pick a winner in about a month. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now before we get into the reports portion of this thing, I just want to talk a little bit about Hurricane Lee. Um, you know, we were pretty worried about this thing coming into last week's report because it was looking like it was going to be a photo finish. It was going to be pretty close to... Uh, you know, making a landfall here or at least a really close approach. Luckily the thing took a little bit of a eastern hook there at the end and it was, you know, all the all things considered the impacts were minimal. Um, had some big waves along the Rhode Island coast and along the Elizabeth Islands. Had some really big waves out on the Cape with winds gusting to 65 but all in all it really wasn't that bad considering what it could have been and uh, the fishing has reflected that. One place that shows a real clear example of that is up in Maine where, you know, since July we've been talking about how Maine has had a phenomenal striper bite and, uh, you know, I kind of warned you guys last week that all this mixing of the water from the, from the storm swell would definitely lower the water temps and it did that up in Maine and now we're starting to see these fish moving south. So um, there are still lots of fish in the 40 to 45 inch class being reported from up in Maine but the other thing that we're hearing is that these fish are on the move. So uh, you know, the migration is finally underway up there, and I think we're going to see things following suit all the way down the coast. Let's jump over the border now and check in with James Jukes. Thanks, Dave. Well, I guess uh, let's get right into the report here. Pre-storm, last weekend was okay. The guys that got out got fish. The guys that didn't go out didn't get fish. Uh, but it was more or less all about hitting that water that was protected uh out in the ocean front here we had uh eight 12 footers so the ocean front here was basically not fishable uh unless you 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 fear for your life uh, everything in the back you know up in the rivers uh close to the mouths everything was pretty good guys got plenty of fish uh, after post storm same thing fish was uh out nothing out on the ocean front to speak of the guys that i've talked to up north and a little south of here they're all getting fish i mean there's plenty of fish around 
you just get out and work your ass off and you'll get into them. Uh, right now I'm just watching the surf. I'm heading out for the night. Tonight's going to be a probably a six hour push. Right down to the low and back in. Throw some eels, check some needlefish, maybe a couple of metal lips. I got a couple of rips that I'm going to work on. Hope everybody else's pre and post storm was just as good. Uh, but it's definitely signs of fall for sure. I uh, ran into a couple of batches of blitzing fish tail end of last week before the storm. Had a nice run of uh, snapper bluefish right up the right up the island here. Uh, the guys that are out on uh, bait, they've been a little slow. So where plug guys are picking up a little bit, the bait guys are definitely getting a little slow. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of both, so you'll find fish if you're out working for them. Um, didn't hear anything from the freshwater guys this week. Not sure if the storm messed those guys up or not. So, uh, but we'll see what happens. The trout stocking, like I said last week, is definitely moving on. Uh, just gotta watch out for the bugs up here. Holy crap, the mosquitoes and flies are crazy right now. Uh, anyways, uh, stick to some of the open areas near the mouths of the rivers and I think you guys will be all right uh, haven't seen any big fish a lot of smaller fish which is good a bunch of slots some of the guys that are working really hard have gotten over slots up to 40 42 inches so that ought to be good uh, just keep working at it guys all right Dave that's it I'm out now, we didn't get a lot of reports in the North Shore area. I'm guessing probably just due to the storm and dirty water and things like that. Not a lot of boats getting out. Uh, but did hear from the situate down to Plymouth shoreline that things are starting to gear up, looking like we might see another one of those blitz uh, you know, periods that they have had the last two years. If, right around this time, the last two years, they have had incredible blitzes, and the bait is in place, so now they're just waiting for the fish to move in. So uh, if you're a striper fisherman, uh, that's definitely a place you want to keep an eye on uh, in the weeks coming, you know, even right up to the beginning of October. So definitely keep an eye on that. The bite that we talked about last week before the storm that was kind of stretching out from basically Manamay all the way out to uh, Barnstable Harbor, that seems to have cooled off quite a bit. That was a needlefish bite at night with some metal lip action. Some nice fish being taken, but uh, since the storm, that has cooled way down. Out on the outer cape, Really didn't hear a lot. Dirty water and uh, no bluefish at all. A couple guys out prospecting, but no real great reports to talk about. The only thing I did hear is some stripers up inside the estuaries. So like inside Pleasant Bay or inside Nosset Inlet, guys are finding some fish, fly fish and soft plastics, and generally these fish are on the smaller side. Um, coming around the tip of the Cape, not a lot of reports from Monomoy this week either, although I did hear of a couple guys that went out to some of the deeper outer rips where the water was a little cleaner and they're still finding slot bass out there. So it does seem like things will come back together. It's just at the moment the bite has been a little off. Uh, coming down now into Nantucket Sound, this is where things get a little bit better. Uh, it's been good bluefish action in the area. Um, and Albies have been up inside the ponds mostly, so in Wakoit, up in Thalmouth Harbor. A uh, few out in Edgartown Harbor, but a look at the Vineyard Derby board will give you, you know, a pretty good look at what is actually going on. They haven't recorded any albies this week. Uh, there's been a decent bonito bite for fish from like three to six pounds, but uh, albies have been pretty well non-existent. <laughs> Best striper fishing in the Massachusetts area is happening around the Elizabeth Islands. You know, all the Elizabeths, all the way out to Cuddy Hunk. We've got some good surf reports from guys that have been out there on the rocks, and then uh, good reports all along the Elizabeths and through Robinsons and Quixes and Woods Hole um, for the boat guys. Some top water action, some good night 
night fishing and a uh, lot of lot of different sizes but averaging you know from like 35 inches up to 20 pounds so um, solid fishing there heading through the islands up toward the canal uh, tog fishing has been pretty good along the actually along both sides of the uh, buzzards bay shoreline and um, up inside the canal things had you know the canal was one of the big winners for the storm um, they had fish right through the whole thing. They had some big blue fish in there. They had, you know, solid stripers from slots up to like 20 pounds. And there were albies in the west end that had that ended up going all the way through to the fish pier. So um, overall, the canal had a pretty good week. For more on that, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Hi, Dave. It's a wet, muggy morning here in the canal. We've got a rising east tide behind me, and uh, we're still fishing is still good. We've got a lot of bait still in the canal. A lot of rain bait and whiting. Uh, peanut bunker, uh, squid, and uh, so the uh, the trio of anglers known as the Bucket Brigade are uh, David Barrows, Ray Barrows, and Bustin Baba Brew, and uh, they're so-called because uh, they sit on buckets in between casts when they're taking a little break. Great guys, great fishermen. So uh, Bustin Bob uh, Brew is also a great lawmaker, and he custom made a nice surface plug for me, which I used uh, the next day and it was attacked by a 34 inch bluefish that started dancing like a topping on the top of the water and splashing like a two-year-old in the tub so uh, thank you Bob a great law um, and uh, uh, Bob Goodwin a couple of days before the storm caught over 30 fish within two days the largest was a uh, 38 inch that he uh, took on the surface with a loaded cotton cordell green mac um, and uh, the day before the storm, uh, John Doble and Scott Yule did well. And uh, I know uh, the biggest one that Scott caught was a 35-inch striper with a uh, outcast and a surface bite. And uh, Scott actually caught an albie on the bottom with a striper gear white rocket. So, and, and I, I've had guys last week also catch albies off the bottom with Green Max Savages. So these fish must be pretty hungry because albies are usually more finicky than that um, and uh, so uh, uh, a guy named George Ledick I, I'd never met him uh, he's from Pennsylvania he, he was fishing a uh, west tide uh, uh, just before dusk and it was a ripping west tide and, and George caught a nice fish that measured out to 50 inches so congratulations to him and um, the day uh, the day after the hurricane, it wasn't that bad around here, but it was a hurricane, uh, uh, Dr. Johan Frange was fishing uh, a west tide, and about an hour before, uh, an hour before uh, dawn, and he was using a uh, Al Gags white soft plastic, and he hooked into a 38-inch uh, striper that he brought to the rocks. He's a great guy, MIT professor, very smart guy, and um, so the uh, con some construction has started on the Bourne Bridge, some repair jobs, and uh, they're going to continue until they're finished. I don't know when that's going to be, but until then, it's restricted to one lane each way. So if you fish on the opposite side of where you live, I'd suggest you probably uh, fish for a while on the same side where you live so you don't have to get involved in that traffic. Uh, so my, my tip of the week is that uh, when you're fishing the canal, it's a little different than fishing on a beach or someplace. Uh, the, the strong current adds some action to your lure, so don't overdo it. Just let the current help you, especially with a surface plug, and, uh, and, and just don't overdo it, because there's all natural uh, uh, action from the current. So um, I'll be away for a few weeks, and I'll see you again in uh, October. So until then, catch a big one. And then just heading out to the western part of the state, talking to Jason Colby. When he's had the weather windows, he's been able to, to get out to Cox's, where cod fishing has been very good. Um, and then inshore, they've been doing really well on tog, like better than they expect to do at this time of the year. And there's been a lot of stripers around the area as well. So western part of Buzzards Bay is definitely holding a lot of fish right now. Definitely a good place to concentrate on. And there's been some albies in the area as well. Jumping over into Rhode Island, no offshore reports this week. It's not a big surprise. Big seas and just, you know, a lot of a lot of nasty wind over the last few days. So hopefully guys will get out there this week and uh, we'll have a report on that for next week. As far as the albies go, the eastern half of Rhode Island had a lot of fish, had a lot of albies um, going into the storm. Since then, it's 
it's been pretty lean. Uh, most of the fish on this side of the state have been up inside Narragansett Bay. Um, so, you know, you hear about some fish up at Fort Adams. You hear about some fish, you know, underneath the, uh, underneath the Mount Hope Bridge. You hear about some fish up near the uh, Braga Bridge, but not a lot of fish out front. The water's still a little dirty, cleaning up, and um, it just seems like that body of fish either went up or went elsewhere. For a little bit more on what's going on in the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecky. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys, nice to be back again. Got a quick video for uh, some of the East Bay, my whole Bay area. Um, and as we all know, storm came through, moved a lot of the bait around, and shifted around in the bay. We got lots of bait all scattered around the bay, and we got lots of hungry fish on them right now. Uh, what attempts kind of dropped a little bit, but uh, they're holding their own. Um, there's lots of bass way up in the rivers, in the Barrington River, in the Warren River, uh, up into the Taunton River. Uh, there's been lots of reports of birds working up between the two bridges in the Taunton River. Lots of birds working out in the middle of the bay off of Coat State Park. Bristol Harbor has been hot with lots of uh, birds working in there with bluefish. Um, there's just lots of opportunities if you're in a boat. Even if you're in the shore, fishermen, Cold Sea Park is great for casting at dawn and dusk. They have a nice pier you can fish on also. Uh, ground fishing. Ground fishing has been actually really good right now. Some big scup being caught inside the bay at the normal haunts underneath the Mount Hope Bridge. Along with the scup, uh, there's been a good tog bite on some of those big pylons underneath the Maho Bridge and off a of common fence point on some of those rocks there. Um, a couple of my buddies have been doing really well in about 20 feet of water off a of common fence point. And if you're underneath the Maho Bridge, uh, most of the water is between 40 and 60 feet. Uh, it's been doing better with keepers. Uh, crabs are the ticket. Don't forget we get the Rhode Island Tog Classic coming up. Um, if you need crabs for that and you want to buy a large amount, uh, such as a bushel or, or more than a gallon, uh, be sure to call Manny at 401-247-2223. Uh, That's Lucky Bait. Um, and reserve those because they're going to go quick. There's a lot of people signed up for this tournament. Um, Albies have been in the Sakonet River coming up through Tiverton Basin. Uh, on Tuesday, they did have some bait trapped right inside the wash of the stone bridge right there. And uh, guys were getting them from shore. So uh, if you're in the Sakana River in that area, looking for albies along the shorelines and in the kind of like rip area, that's a great rip right there. Uh, you're gonna catch albies in there because they like to trap the bait up against either the rocks or get them stuck inside of a rip and they go to town. Um, so lots of things happening up here in the Mount Hope Bay, East Bay area. So, uh, if you can get out there and fish, now's the time to do it. Um, I, it, it is going to get a little better, even, well, I mean, it's great, but it's going to get even better, uh, before it gets worse. So, uh, get out there and do some fishing. Tight lines. On the striper end of things, most of the striper reports I've been hearing have been coming from guys fishing from the surf, and the guys that have been the most successful are fishing inlets. Uh, I've heard of fish from 25 inches to 25 pounds coming out of uh, all different sizes of inlets from small ponds all the way to the breachways along the south shore. Um, many reasons for this but probably the biggest is just that they're injecting bait into dirty water and they're also probably you know pushing out some cleaner water into what was a lot dirtier. Things are cleaning up now but um, you know coming out of the storm the inlets were definitely the place that were putting out the most stripers. As far as albies go, the best albie bite this week was around Point Judith and the West Wall. Uh, really popped off a few days this week with lots of fish for the shore guys and the boat guys. Um, heading out more toward Block Island, I haven't heard a lot. Uh, a lot of the boats haven't run or hadn't run and um, so you know that there's going to be some decent sea bass action out there. Uh, if you can get out to Cox's, you're going to find those codfish. I'm sure there's still some stripers out on the ledge, but we're not hearing a ton. For a little bit more on all that, let's toss it over now to John Lee from JL Charters. I haven't gotten out much this week. We had that we had that tropical storm Lee, so I missed a few days there. I had kind of a slow bottom fish trip between the systems. And um, tomorrow I'm going out giant tuna fishing. First trip of the year offshore for me. I'm pretty excited. 
I got a group that wants to go. We're going to chunk some butterfish, hope to get some blue fins, maybe a late season yellow fin, and I'll give you a report next week. Of course, we got more weather coming this weekend. So a lot of easterly, northeast, not looking good for, uh, for wind. Take care. See you next time. And then heading out to the western part of the state again, focus on the inlets if you, uh, if you want to catch striped bass. There are some transient schools of Albies and Bonito out that way, but just not the concentration that we are seeing around Point Judith. We'll see what this week brings as water cleans up and things start to kind of return to normal. But uh, for now, um, you know, you're going to be putting your time in if you're going to be finding any uh, Albies out that way. However, one of the best fisheries in the state right now is, is tog. Uh, tog fishing has been phenomenal. Uh, we got so many rocky ledges in Rhode Island, um, and these fish are being found from 5 feet all the way out to 50 feet. So um, togging has been phenomenal. Highly recommend heading out and giving that a shot this week when, the, when things are calm like they are today. And for a wrap-up in Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to Declan O'Donnell from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Uh, fishing this past week has been really, really good. Uh, a lot of really nice striped bass coming in off the breachways. Uh, the bite's been particularly good at night. Uh, on the outgoing tide. Uh, there's been a lot of big bait in the water uh, from mullet, snapper to shad. Uh, it's really getting the stripers going, uh, really putting their chew on. Uh, so fishing's been very consistent uh, off the breachways here in Southern Round. Uh, not so crazy off the beach yet. Water's still warm and uh, the water's still churned up a lot. Uh, should expect some blitzes to start happening as soon as the water temp starts dropping a bit. Uh, that being said, with the cloudy water, stock fishing has been okay this past week. Uh, to get on a consistent bite, you definitely have to work some deeper water. Uh, it should only be improving. We do have another storm coming in this weekend. Uh, it's not looking too good for some boat anglers getting out there. But the bite should only improve. Uh, thanks again for including me in this week's report. Heading over into Connecticut, uh, I think the biggest thing right now is just how fast the Albies are moving in Connecticut. We had them in the Eastern Sound last week, storm came and they went 50, 60 miles in. Now they're up, uh, up around middle ground and they're kind of getting along the North Shore of Long Island and they're finding some fish too, you know, all the way out into like the Norwalk Island. So a lot of fish just moved and uh, the guys that are out there looking for them now in the eastern sound are striking out and uh, hoping for the next wave so we're gonna have to see if that happens a couple things that are going on in the eastern sound up around the mouth of the thames river there's still been a pretty good striper bite most of these fish are 24 to 35 inches so we're not talking about monsters but we are talking about good top water action which is fun and enjoyable a lot of guys enjoying that also great porgy action all around there from you know, Black Reef to Sarah's Ledge and off of Avery Point and some of those rocks off of Pleasure Beach and all the way up to the um, up to the Fort Trumbull Pier. There's just lots and lots of porgy action. So if you're into that, um, that's definitely a good place to go. Whether you want to fish from shore, boat, kayak, paddleboard, it doesn't matter. It's all happening there. Heading a little further west, Niantic Bay is probably your best shot of finding some albies in the Eastern Sound. I have heard of a few schools charging around the Two Tree and the Tuna Alley area there. So, um, you know, that's a place I would go if you're desperate for an Albi and you don't want to launch out of New Haven or something like that. Heading up toward the Connecticut River, the bass bite is coming together. We're starting to see more bigger fish now. Uh, Bartlett's Reef has had a good mix of sizes and lots of good action, especially in the morning. And uh, it just sounds like the bass fishing is really starting to come together there. For more on that, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy for Real Cash Jars. Hey guys, for this week's Fisher Report, the fall run is definitely underway. You can now find a lot of turns diving on peanut bunker and under them the stripers and bluefish feeding heavily uh this has been one of the best bluefish years we've had of recent years there are a lot of bluefish ranging from small tailor and harbor sized bluefish all the way up to big 12 13 pound gator sized blues uh the false albacore are all throughout long island sound um they're a little inconsistent in terms of you'll find them in one area one day and gone the next but uh, just be ready for them because they are popping up all over the place. And the black sea bass fishing has remained really good. Uh, mostly vertical jigging, small metals like the Shimano current sniper jig. Um, so expect all this to improve as temperatures start to cool. We should uh, really be in for a great fall run.
Good luck. While we're in the region, let's head up the river and talk to Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, so we're looking at high water in most of the Connecticut River tributaries again. That seems to be the, uh, the theme of the season. Uh, and more on the way. Looks like rain this weekend. Uh, those rainy conditions should produce some pretty decent fishing. Uh, these pulses of rain will often push more of those young in the year shad and herring out, and I have been seeing smallmouth and largemouth bass feeding on those. Uh, those rain pulses are also really fantastic uh, for fishing any of the tributaries that come up from that rain. Uh, right at the mouth of those tributaries, uh, fishing cut bait uh, for channel catfish. Uh, this is the time of year when some of the larger channel catfish really start to become available. Late September and October kind of seem to be the good window for getting 10 pound and up uh, channel catfish. That is mostly a bait based bite, but if you find areas where they're really stacked, it's not uncommon for anglers on the river to see big piles of channel catfish uh, on their electronics. You can get them on blade baits and on uh, jigs and paddle tails pretty effectively. Uh, so get out there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you can tolerate the rain this weekend, uh, and we'll see if our conditions ever really stabilize. I guess they're stabilized in uh, somewhat of a high water pattern. Uh, you could at least say that. Uh, but good luck, everyone. Uh, hope, that, hope you're successful. Now we'll take a right out of the river, head a little west, and we'll check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outdoors. Things settling into fall cooler weather mode now that that storm has passed through. Um, it's definitely feeling more like fall out there. You're wearing hoodies in the morning, a little chilly in the morning, and then stripping that down to a t-shirt by lunchtime. Um, pretty typical fall temperatures for us. Um, so what we're seeing out there, we've still got a really good striper bite locally in the sounds. There's a lot of fish around. Um, once the water kind of clears out a little bit, I expect those blitzes to kick back up the, with the birds and all that jazz. Um, Albies reports have been slow in the central sound. We heard a couple popping up west of the Connecticut River, um, but we're waiting for kind of another push of fish to come into the central and eastern sound um, right at the moment. Sea bass fishing has been pretty good. It typically picks up in the fall and it has. Um, we've had guys doing really well with Daiwa SK jigs, um, doing bait rigs, things like that. Um, not a ton on the fluke front. Um, guys are still picking them up here and there, but it seems like most folks are switching over to um, the sea bass as well as targeting the stripers. Uh, a lot of blues around right now, a lot of little snappers, um, and a lot of ones that are very happy to chew your soft plastics in half. Um, so if you're using soft plastics and you're getting chewed in half, switch over to a metal, something easy to unhook um, for those guys. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, a lot of beautiful days ahead of us, a couple good months ahead of us on the water. So get out there and enjoy the day. Now, all the reefs west of the river seem to be holding a lot of striped bass too. Uh, talking to TJ from Rock and Roll Charters, he said it's kind of old school right now. Lots and lots of bass, all different sizes from 4 pounds up to 40 pounds. Uh, decent numbers of bluefish in the mix and of course they're crushing the porgies as well. So, uh, you know, great multi-species action going on in that region. As you head further west, you start getting more and more into the Albies. Again, middle ground has had a lot of fish and then lots and lots of fish further out. Um, for more on that, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. The Albi bite blew up this past week. Me and Lauren are actually heading out now to get on the local Albi bite. There's been big schools in the mid sound, you know, off the island, Southport, Westport, all the way east of Middle Ground. Guys shooting across, fishing Smithtown Bay, Crane's Neck, Port Jeff, they've also been doing really well. We, we should look forward to see these fish pushing more inshore on all our small bait we have around. The striper bite remains consistent. It's actually picking up. Early morning, sunset, and night times is your best bet. 11B still got a great diamond jigging bite on the outgoing with the blues and some bass mixed in. The porgies are still, you know, everywhere. Shallow water reefs from the beaches. Guys are getting them, you know, shallow rock piles, deep water wrecks. And then sea bass are still in the deep water. So I know, you know, anglers fishing 50 foot or more in wrecks and reefs like 28C, Celtic wreck, the wrecks outside the islands. They've been doing well and finding their limits. Thanks and good luck. That's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. Um, if you're looking for Albies, you got to fish central Rhode Island or western Long Island Sound. Uh, a lot of other places right now seem to be up in the air. I do think these fish will regroup um, as we continue to recover from the storm and, you know, the water temperature dipping and all that stuff. So uh, it's just going to be, you know, it's one of those times when you got to do a little more hunting than fishing right now. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of what we offer. If everything, we cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We got reports, we've got articles. We cover all different types of fishing. It costs you 30 bucks, you're gonna get 12 bucks, uh, 12 bucks. You're gonna get 12 issues sent to your mailbox. Those are paper magazines. And you're gonna get 26 digital magazines sent to your email 
uh, every week during the fishing season that's April to the middle of November. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. If you're still not convinced after checking out the website, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.